All right, everybody. We have had a whole lot of JK Rowling in the news lately. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy, massive AAA game that everyone's really excited for based in the Harry Potter universe in the 1800s is about to come out and people are fucking hyped for it. People are really excited for this game and uh, I've already gone a lot into the discourse around this game and just generally consuming Harry Potter products and whether or not it is moral, immoral, or morally neutral. And uh, I don't really think I need to dip further into that very tired argument at this point. So instead, I'm going to be talking about a post that she made just yesterday that is just absolutely extraordinary. But before we look at her post, and before we dismantle it, talk about it, and uh, make fun of her for it, of course, I, I want to give you guys a little bit of context, a little bit of background that sort of informs my opinion on this issue. So, for those of you guys who haven't seen, here in America at least, Martin Luther King is an interesting figure because he's been deified by pretty much all of American culture. Even conservatives have to really skate around criticizing the guy. He, he's, he's like looked back on as like the Jesus of the civil rights movement here in America, right? But for conservatives to accept that somebody who did so much objective good and is so objectively loved, for conservatives to accept someone like that, they have to whitewash him and they have to whitewash the entire movement that he was a part of. And uh, you'll see a lot of conservatives, you know, like something that a lot of, you know, Americans don't know is that MLK was a socialist. That's not very common knowledge. I did not learn that until I was an adult and actually was shown his writings and looked up his writings online. That's something that they don't teach in school because, wait, this guy who's like a really like, morally upstanding person who you're taught to, is a hero in, his, in American history was a socialist? Huh, maybe socialism isn't evil. Yeah, that's not exactly the idea that the school system wants you uh, getting from your education here. So, basically, you're taught that MLK was this liberal, uh, you know, peaceful, uh, you know, like, all about equality and race blindness and just... I want people to be judged by the color of, not by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. That's it. Be race blind. All of that. That's basically been the butchered caricature of MLK that the right, for the most part, have forced Americans to remember. However, the conservatives of the time that MLK was alive and politically active, they didn't see him the same way. In fact, if you're curious of how they presented him, this is how. I plan to lead another non-violent march tomorrow. And that's MLK there, if you can't tell by the fact it's labeled, uh, with a, you know, some journalist here and just a town that has been burnt to the ground. Does this sound familiar, guys? Does anything about this political com uh, comic and the message it tells sound familiar? It's very in line with the modern day anti-BLM right-wing propaganda. Pretty much exactly modern-day right-wing anti-BLM propaganda. With that said, this is a very good instance in which someone who is a polit- like a progressive can call back to a past civil rights movement uh, to inform our knowledge about what's going on today. I assume you guys would agree, right? This is pretty indicative of like, you can learn a lot from this to, to give you knowledge and context about what's going on today. And, and how people are treating these issues today, obviously. However, there is a group of people who claim to be progressives, or at least try to front like they're progressives. I don't really even think they claim to be, um, but in fact are some of the most regressive, reactionary, and bigoted people out there. These people are called TERFs, trans-exclusionary radical feminists. These are, for the most part, women who hate men. And they include trans women under the umbrella of men. And you will often find that they just engage in the most horrific and hate-filled uh, screeds against trans women in particular that you can possibly imagine. Now, they are not actually feminists. There's nothing about what they stand for that is genuinely feminist. Um, the closest thing to being feminist they stand for is their man-hate, and man-hate is just an aspect of feminism the internet has kind of 
forced upon it, you know? So, they are pretty much feminists in name only. They're feminists in the same way that the, D that the DPRK of North Korea is, uh, you know, the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea is a Democratic People's Republic. They are, um, not at all, uh, feminists, okay? They're just not feminists. They are, for the most part, very traditional right-wing, older white women, okay? With that said, uh, a lot of these TERFs feel as though they are victims, as most bigots do. Most bigots do not feel like they are a powerful force that is suppressing a minority. They feel like they are a morally just, inherently morally just group of people who currently has a tenuous hold on power that morally they deserve to hold on to, but these pesky minorities are taking from them. And so, much like any other reactionary, the TERF plays victim. The TERF acts like they are the ones being victimized by those they are trying to take the rights away from. So JK Rowling, as I mentioned, is one of these people. She is a TERF. And she tweeted something amazing. Same shit, different century. And here you have a, a, a political comic what I should do with the suffragist suffragists, and you got a 65 pound weight tied to the ankle of a suffragist as she is having her head crushed in a vice. So this is very clearly like a meme that was made. This is literally no different than like a modern day incel meme. You know what's so funny is that Twitter is right now infested with because of Elon Musk taking over. Twitter is right now infested with conservatives and incels sharing videos of women being assaulted for things they deem to be morally reprehensible, which is pretty much the same as this. But trust me, you do not have, uh, you do not have JK Rowling talking about that issue on Twitter because those people agree with her politically. She says, same shit, different century, this meme, compared to this meme. Shut the fuck up, turf. And then the, 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 I assume anime trans girl is holding a gun. No. No, these are not the same. Uh, this is about as similar to the previous meme as come and take it is, you know? Like, like a, like a libertarian with, like, his meme, with his meme where he's holding his guns and he's like, come and take them. Like, th th there, there is not, this is a, a political cartoon made to encourage violence against an, a political group that is vying for the right to vote, the right to work, and the right to literally be seen legally as as much of a person as a man. While this is a meme made in response to TERFs singling out random like 13-year-old trans girls on Twitter and sending their follower bases to harass them into suicide with like 40% memes. This is just playing the victim. Obviously, you have a pretty fantastic Keffel's reply here. Are you trying to imply trans women want to take away your right to vote? Uh, that is, of course, not what is happening. Um, there's a bunch of other really good replies here from some pretty great people. Merrick replied, Suffragettes were imprisoned and tortured. You are given everything to punch down at people who want to be- who you want to be genocided by the state. You are more like the men tormenting the suffragettes. Which is, of course, true. Um, you can see it with pretty much every other issue that the reactionary right has tried to push their stance on, where they take the victim, you know? The, the wh white people are now being replaced and are the most, uh, you know, looked down on and tr downtrodden race in our society. Straight people are actually, straight people are the ones who are going to be having to come out of the closet pretty soon, you know? You're seeing this kind of sentiment that, like, it is, in fact, those in power who are actively fighting to repress minorities, who are the victims of those minorities. The evidence of that? Here are some examples of these minorities fighting to get rights. And fighting against those that are trying to oppress them. It really is... It's, it's demonic. It's straight-up despicable, the type of propaganda these people sp spread. This is like uh, saying black people were oppressed, now the KKK is being oppressed. Well, yeah, that's literally the moral equivalent of what they're doing here. Imagine being as wealthy as Joanne Karen Rowling and being oppressed. You know what? You know what always, like, even when I was young, just kind of struck me as weird with J.K. Rowling? Was when I found out that she used 
J.K. Rowling in the name for the Harry Potter books so people wouldn't know the books were written by a woman. That struck me as weird and odd when I was a kid. Like, it just didn't sit right with me for some reason. Like, okay, I mean, I don't think it really would have changed anything. It sounds like you're... Like, the explanation I had given was, I, as a young boy, am such a piece of shit that a book with a woman's name on it, I wouldn't even consider picking it up. Like, that's the impression that I got back then. I understand that, you know, sometimes boys will get, like, shit from their peers for reading a book that's for girls, I guess, but eh, it just seemed weird. And then, now I know, as an adult, it's even weirder that she has continued to use a male pseudonym even after proving herself as one of the most famous authors ever. She now uses a male pseudonym Robert Galbraith, which is not only a male pseudonym, but also the same name uh, as um, the inventor of conversion therapy. It's fucked up. Shia Rychik's inflamed hemorrhoid in a uh, YouTube chat. What a name. JK Rowling has admitted she identified more with masculinity before, hasn't she? There is a non-zero chance. There is a non-zero chance that JK Rowling is a closeted trans man. Okay? The way she talks sounds a lot like Cope at certain times. But you know what? It's not my place to guess, okay? She's literally said that, oh, I think if I was if I was a kid today, I would have been diagnosed with gender dysphoria and they would have forced me into the life of a man if I was a, if I was a young girl today. She's literally said that. So I mean, yeah. Kind of yeah, it's really weird, huh? Really really weird. Either way, just know that the biggest victimizers will always play the victim. And uh, the harder they play the victim, the more you should maybe do your research. Don't be immediately suspicious. Don't be immediately incredulous or disp and filled with disbelief. But maybe do your research. Because let's just say there are very few to no crossover between the suffragettes and the turf movement in the UK. In fact, they believe JK one of JK Rowling's turf friends is a neo-Nazi, right? Um, I covered this recently. Does anybody have a link to it? Does anyone have the link to the uh, popular turf J.K. Rowling is friends with doing a, uh, uh, quoting Hitler? That was a, that was a good one. I like that one. Anyone have a link to it? Yeah, she reads from Mein Kampf. It would be really punchy if we had the link to this and I didn't just have to say it. Oh, you got it? That's an article about it. You can't expect me to sift through Wayback Machine to find this shit. You can't send me a Wayback Machine link with a whole year's worth of, of screenshots and tell me, look through all of them till you find it while I'm live. You can't do that to me. Okay, I found- okay, here's- here's a Twitter link. Here's a much more reasonable Twitter link. Here we go. Alright, let me stop the Hightail Lo-Fi really fast. Here's, uh, one of J.K. Rowling's, uh, turf friends. Giving a speech. Lie. Do you know the big lie? The big lie was first described by Adolf Hitler in Mein Kampf. The Can I just say it? This woman is, like, the titular turf. Like, when I imagine a turf in my head, if it's not J.K. Rowling, this woman fits literally every bit of the stereotypes. So's in my dinner! Lovely! Lie is such a big lie that ordinary people like us think, well, that can't be a lie, because I'd never tell any big a as big a lie as that. We only lie in small ways. The big lie, well, there is one big lie going on, and it was begun by men in oh, the early part of the 20th century. It was began when they had an erotic fantasy and they decided they were going to sell us the big lie. And what is the big lie? The big lie is trans women are... Lie. So yeah, there's a little, uh, little turf Nazi speech going on there. For the record, I, I guess I'll give a little context to that insane ramble. Basically, a lot of turfs believe that being trans, like gender dysphoria, they don't believe in it. They completely disagree and reject scientific consensus, as most uh, reactionaries do. What they will essentially do is argue that um, being trans is actually autogynophilia, which is, I guess, it's a sexual attraction to the opposite it is a sexual attraction to having the opposite sex's genitalia, right? And and doing sexual things with that, right? So TERFs are basically trying to claim that 
Trans women are men who are not only, you know, men who they believe are predatory rapist monsters because they hate men, but are also like doing a weird sex kink with just being trans. That is why they um, fight so hard to say that a trans person, even being in the proximity of a child, should be killed and put in the wood chipper. They argue this quite incessantly on a lot of the uh, uh, forum boards because they believe being trans is a sex act. And to be trans in front of a kid is pedophilia. And of course, pedophilia is something that should be met with immediate murder. And so that's basically where a lot of these TERFs and conservatives and right-wingers and whatnot and, and you know, a lot of the Republican Party have gotten a lot of their moral uh, justification for the death of trans people. They believe the deaths of more trans people is a good thing. They, they actively, you know, their, their demagogues fight for it and advocate for it and joke about it. And, you know, they 40% and everything. But the politicians, they get to skate on just not caring about reality. They know that the outcomes of what they're doing is going to result in trans people dying. They probably want it, or they don't care about reality, or they just want to please their base. And most people are just not really politically inclined enough to care. The sad thing is that most people are not politically inclined, inclined enough to care, and if you try to get them to care, they'll feel insulted. That's, that's the real sad part, is that most people, when you try to get them to care about these topics, feel genuinely assaulted and insulted. It really sucks, but yeah. Victimizers aren't vi victims. There's really mu not much else to say about it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, you know, do donate on my website and all that stuff. I really do appreciate it. You guys know what to do. And with all that said, thank you so much for watching and have a good one.